वेलकम टू द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ डिस्टेंस एंड कॉन्टीन्यूइंग एजुकेशन यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ डेली मास्टर ऑफ बिजनेस एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन एम बी ए सेमेस्टर वन कोर कोर्स एम बी ए एफ टी सिक्स वन जीरो एट इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी मैनेजमेंट लेसन नंबर थ्री मोड्स ऑफ डेटा प्रोसेसिंग थ्री पॉइंट वन लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव वी विल बी एबल टू रिस्पॉन्ड टू क्वेरीज कंसर्निंग वेयर वैन एंड हाउ डेटा इज स्टोर्ड एंड यूज बाय द एंड ऑफ दिस कोर्स फॉलोइंग आर सम पॉइंटर्स दैट वी कैन लोकेट इन दिस यूनिट डेटा फाइल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन रेलिवेंस ऑफ डेटा बेस मास्टर एंड ट्रांजेक्शन फाइल्स यूज ऑफ डेटा फाइल्स इन प्रोग्रामिंग इनपुट प्रोसेस आउटपुट एनालिसिस मैनेजमेंट ऑफ डेटा प्रोसेसिंग सिस्टम्स इन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन थ्री पॉइंट टू इंट्रोडक्शन डेटा हैज बिन अ बज वर्ड फॉर अ वेरी लॉन्ग एवरी टाइप ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन दैट वी एक्सेस इज अ क्लास ऑफ डेटा डेटा हैज ऑलवेज बीन इन क्लोज एसोसिएशन विद इलेक्ट्रॉनिक डिवाइसिस अकॉर्डिंगली there is a need to store and code this data as a concept in devices in an optimized form for better usage of this relevant information at the same time when we are talking about storing this data it is vital to learn about how this data storage is used in computing environments and problem solving seamlessly managing data has resulted in modern day fields like data science machine learning and development with a joint based concept of data 3.3 computer system software let us break down the heading into two parts system software and application software system software is a set of programs data or instructions to perform a well defined function a program is a set of instructions written to solve a particular program when these programs are designed to perform functions on a computer system they are categorized as computer system software System software is a collection of programs defined to operate, control and optimize the processing potential of the computer system. System software manages the computing and works closely with the hardware. These are generally written in low level languages that are easy for the hardware to understand. Example, operating systems, a very prominent system software used in every type of computer, Windows, Android, Linux, and mac os are some popular system software that everybody comes across whenever they use some computing device the operating system is subject to handling computer software and hardware resources it can be said that the operating system acts as a platform between the hardware and the application software that needs to use computer resources all these functions correspond to control of the computer system and hardware environment to understand the features that system software should hold let us consider operating system as our basis number 1 high speed number 2 secure number 3 written in low level language number 4 close to system hardware number 5 versatile in handling the processes after evaluating all these points it can be said that a system software maintains primary system resources and processes it must meet specific hardware needs and interactions it also acts as an abstraction as it works in the background and user usually do not access it directly it is essential for the system to have the software that administers it to run the application programs in a computing environment computer programs known as application software carry out particular tasks application software can carry out a variety of tasks including personal professional and academic ones Application software is frequently referred to as productivity software or end user software. Each piece of software is designed to help users with specific productivity, efficiency or communication process. In contrast to system software, application software is focused on its functionality and completes the goal for which it was created. On our smartphones, the vast majority of the apps we use are examples of application software. examples are microsoft products such as office powerpoint etc music application software etc in text questions number 1 the software which performs a specific task is known as dash number 2 word processing software is an example of application software true or false 3.4 software development life cycle software development is expanding and so is the need to deliver high quality software faster 
This has put software development teams under constant strain to produce high quality software that meets customer expectations, finishes within time and is feasible economically and technically. 3.4.1 What is SDLC? It is essential to understand that when we work to build a product or software, it is essential to go through a series of familiar stages, a roadmap or flow that helps us to create timely and generate high quality result. This flow we follow is called the software development life cycle. Accordingly, software organizations follow a methodology that boosts the overall development process with an intent to describe a software communication, development testing, deployment and maintenance. 3.4.2 Why use SDLC? Number 1. It supports effective planning prior to the actual development to avoid software crisis in the future. This is due to the fact that they adhere to a well-organized approach that enables them to test the software before it is released. Number 2. It helps in regulating cost required for the development. Proper reasoning and studies can predict the cost risk allowing stakeholders to look after costly mistakes. Number 3. It provides methods to assess the effectiveness of the software as each iteration produces a software increment that provides investors with a subclass of overall software features and functionality to keep track of time and quality. 3.4.3 Stages of SDLC The first one is Requirement Analysis Next is Defining and after that Designing After that Coding After that Testing after testing, we do deployment and the last one is maintenance. Stage 1. Requirement Analysis Requirement analysis is the most crucial and necessary stage in SDLC. All the project stakeholders communicate quality assurance requirement that cater to the user's need. The phase also analyzes the risk and cost that may occur during the life cycle. The project managers and analysts set up meetings with other stakeholders to discuss the scope and intended audience and perform a rough feasibility analysis followed by probing the customer, the users and others what are the requirements for the system or product, what is to be achieved, how the system or product fits into business proving a core understanding of what is to be built. In case of any ambiguity, elaboration, negotiation, specification, and validation is performed by executing follow-up meetings. Step 2. Defining requirements. All the conclusions from the requirement analysis are then drawn into the SRS, Software Requirement Specification document, which is thoroughly followed and reviewed by the stakeholders. This further defines all type of requirements functional, non-functional, hardware, etc. and gets them authorized by stakeholders. The SRS document defines the whole project and serves as a basis for ensuring all the teams are synced and the process model is followed. Stage 3. Designing Now that all the requirements are defined, the designing of the product starts by understanding the software project's requirement. The project is modulated and designed to provide the developers with a line on which they have to build the project. This provides a blueprint to the developers in the form of data flow diagrams and UML diagrams such as use cases, state diagrams, class diagrams, etc. Stage 4 Development The development really starts to take off at this point. The blueprint provided by the design phase is trailed while writing the code. Various IDEs, compilers, debuggers, and development tools and languages are used at this stage to implement the project as per the requirements and constraints. All this gives a working product as an output, but there is still a lot to do with it in order to enhance its quality and effectiveness. Stage 5 Testing After all the code is generated, it is tested and validated against the requirements to ensure that the code is developed as per the requirements and constraints. The testing strategies are as follows. Number 1. Black box testing. Number 2. White box testing. All this is carried out by unit testing, integration testing, system testing and acceptance testing. Stage 6. Deployment. The product is created, tested and ready to be presented to the user at this stage. Hence, 
it needs to be hosted for the users to use it all the authorizations and reviews are performed with all the stakeholders and based on the assessment the product version is released once the deployment is done feedback slash suggestions may be given by the users or stakeholders to improve the quality of the product all these suggestions are taken care of in the next phase stage 7 maintenance the issues or suggestions collected once the deployment is done solved at this stage the real time issues are solved thus maintaining the working and the quality of the product throughout its life in text questions number three find the incorrect phase of sdlc software development life cycle a requirement gathering b system analysis c software design d all of the above number four the first stage in sdlc framework is dash Number 5. SDLC stands for DASH. Number 6. Find the incorrect testing technique. A. Collaboration testing. B. Integration testing. C. System testing. D. Unit testing. 3.5. Software development process. 3.5.1. What is SDP? The software development process divides the software development into small, sequential steps to reinforce the product, project, and style altogether. The term software development process refers to the interactive process, refers to iterative logical procedure used to create software programs that meet the needs of any corporate or personal goal. 3.5.2 Types of Models In the software development phase, various software development life cycle models are specified and designed. Software development process models is another name for these models to ensure success in the software development step. Each process model adheres to a set of steps that are specific to its type. 3.5.2.1 Waterfall model The software development process divides the software development into tiny sequential steps to reinforce the product sequential steps to reinforce the product project and style altogether the software development process is an iterative logical method for creating computer programs that meet the needs of any business or personal goal let us learn about the waterfall schematic diagram first one is requirements after requirements we do design and after that development after that testing after that implementation and the last one is maintenance advantages of waterfall model this model is simple and easy to use and understand next point is it is easy to manage due to the rigidness of the model each phase has specific deliverables and a review process next point is clearly defined stages and the last point is well understood milestones 3.5.2.2 iterative model here, iterative development software changes after every iteration to evolve and grow. Since each iteration is based on the previous one, the software design remains consistent as software is delivered in fragments. There is no need for a comprehension specification from the project's initiation and minor changes to requirements are possible during the development process. Major requirements, especially those for system architecture in the event of incremental development, since further integrating the created software components can become a problem, cannot be changed after they are established. Let us learn about the iterative schematic diagrams. Requirements are further divided into three stages, build one, build two, build three. Under build one, we do design and development after that testing and the last one is implementation and the same process follows under build 2 and build 3 advantages of iterative model less expensive to alter or repair the scope of requirements last point is produces working software swiftly during the software life cycle 3.5.2.3 incremental model the incremental model is a process of software development where requirements are fragmented into multiple standalone modules of the software development cycle. Every version of the system adds functionality to the proceeding release as each iteration progresses through the process of requirement, design, 
coding and testing. This process continues until all intended functionality has been realized. Let us learn about the incremental model schematic diagram. Requirements are further divided into three categories that is build one, build two, build three. Under build one, we do design and development. After that, we do testing. After that, we do implementation. And the last we do is maintenance. This same process follows under build two and build three as well. Advantages of incremental model. It is easier to debug and test during a small size iteration. Next point, here user can respond to each build. Last one is decreases initial delivery cost. Agile model. The agile software development's life cycle model combines iterative and incremental process models with a focus on the process adaptability and customer satisfaction through quick delivery of functional software. The product is divided into smaller incremental builds using agile methods. Iterations of these builds are supplied. Usually an interaction lasts between one and three weeks. Cross functional teams work simultaneously on several different topics during each iteration, including number one, planning. Next one is requirement analysis. Next is design. Next is coding. Next is unit testing. And the last point is acceptance testing. 3.5.2.4 Evolutionary Model Within the evolutionary model, all the work is completed during the development phase. During this model, all work is divided into small chunks or modules. For instance, the waterfall model during which all the users can access the product at the end of each cycle. This model may be a combination of incremental and iterative models. The drawback of all models is that it takes a very long time from the start of the project to offer a solution. The evolutionary model finds a different solution to this issue. Advantages of evolutionary model. The process of determining how likely a risk will occur in a project is called risk analysis. It examines the ambiguity of prospective risk and how if they materialized, they might affect the project schedule, quality and cost. It is easier to analyze risk in this model. Next point is it supports changing environment. Next is better suited for large mission critical projects. Next one is the software is produced swiftly during the life cycle, facilitating customer evaluation and feedback. 3.5.2.5 Spiral Model the spiral model provides insight into complete risk analysis. Therefore, if we want to benefit entirely from the approach, we must work with the individuals with solid risk analysis experience. A particular spiral iteration lasts about six months and starts with the four essential activities through planning, risk analysis, prototype creation and evaluation of the previously delivered part. Spiral cycles that are repeated significantly lengthen project timelines. This figure represents spiral model schematic diagram. Advantages of spiral model. First point with a more significant amount of risk analysis. Hence prevention of risk is enhanced. Next is suitable for large and mission critical projects. Next is strong approval and documentation control. Next is additional functionality can be added later on in text questions. Number seven. What is the spiral model's biggest flaw? A. Higher amount of risk analysis. B. Additional functionalities are added later on. C. Strong approval and documentation control. D. Does not work well with smaller projects. Question number eight. The increment model is the combination of which models? A. Build and fix model and waterfall model. B. Linear model and waterfall model. C. Linear model and prototyping model D both A and B 3.6 data design consider a situation where we need to locate a particular data file among many data files. Evidently, it is a rigorous process since we have to check every data file. However, what if we design a structure to arrange the data in a specific pattern? It will not only save us time, but will lead to an efficient mechanism. That is what data designing is about. 
to sum up data designing demonstrate the types of data stored in the system and how we can group the related data together in a well organized manner to create a robust design it helps to design the databases on a physical and logical level producing an entity relationship diagram erd helps to visualize the mechanism 3.6.1 levels in data design this architecture has three level the physical level logical level and the conceptual level first one is conceptual level first one is conceptual level a conceptual model should be focused on things related to the business and its requirements this explains what the system contains the purpose is to define and organize business rules and concepts and therefore is created by business stakeholders entities and relationships modeled in such erd are evidently around the business needs it is the simplest among all next is logical level the logical model defines how the system should be implemented it should be focused on the design of data about those things without a reference to a particular physical implementation it is created by data architects and the purpose is to develop data structures it typically refers to implementation details like relational hierarchical key value object oriented and graph next and the last is physical level a physical model describes how data is stored like data formats indexes data partition distribution etc it represents the actual design blueprint of a relational database and how data should be structured the goal is actually to implement the database it explains the relation in a specific dbms so it is vital to consider the convention and restrictions of the dbms we use when designing a physical erd this means the proper use of data type is needed for entity columns and the occurrence of reserved words should be inhibited in naming entities and columns it is created by dba and developers so they may also add primary keys foreign keys and constraint to the design 3.7 report design the report is the document that explains the process outcome and all the work we have done to accomplish the final design now we might have gathered all the relevant information but there is no certainty that it will be engaging some might find it verbose we have to design the report in such a way that it highlights and reflects what we want to convey to the users readers in order to accomplish that report designing comes into play today we have many tools to design our report we can get ready made templates and even one can add the specific type of requirements and designs one has to look into report styling it includes some features like first is report layouts to make it presentable next is charts map and other data bound items to make it engaging last is various styling capabilities like conditional formatting etc thus the reports can be styled and exported in any format 3.8 organization of data files a file is named structure that holds related data and can be stored on various secondary storage devices since the data can be organized in different ways there are various organization types available for files some file organizations sequential file organization random file organization indexed sequential file organization last is serial file organization 3.8.1 sequential file organization this is the simplest way of storing data where records are kept in a particular sequential sorted order sorted records make it easy for the operator to search a record in the file by applying algorithms like binary search nevertheless there is a catch all records cannot be of the same size therefore it is difficult to inculcate this organizational approach 3.8.2 random file organization the organization approach allows us to store the records randomly but provides direct access for direct access records keys are used to find records associated with them example magnetic and optical disks follow this technique for organizing files this has an advantage over the sequential organization as the records can be of different sizes 3.8.3 indexed sequential file organization 
An index is used to help the customer find specific records on the storage media, almost identical to the sequential method. For instance, records are sequentially stored on the tracks of a magnetic drum. Each record is given a unique index which can be used to access it directly. 3.8.4 Serial file organization. The term heap file also refers to serial file organization. This procedure adds record to the data blocks at the end of the file. The sorting of data is not necessary. This strategy is appropriate when a large volume of data must be loaded into an organization. Data access takes longer than using a sorted file approach. In text questions, number nine, the data file contains dash. Number 10. Dash is the process of arranging your files into blocks and placing those blocks on a storage media. Number 11. What does sequential file organization entail? A. Any record can be placed wherever there is a space for the record. B. Records are stored in sequential order according to a search key. C. A hash function is computed on some attribute that decides the block. D. None of the mentioned. 3.9 Master and Transactional Files Various file types are used to store data needed for processing, reference, or backup. The most prevalent categories of processing files are master files, transaction files, reference files, backup files, report files, and sort files. 3.9.1 Master Files As the name suggests, master serves as an authoritative data source. It is the main file pertaining to relatively permanent records about specific items or entries. Output and input parameter files are specified in the master files. Such files include information that is continuously updated by recent transactions. It can be further subdivided into static and dynamic master files. Examples include customer ledgers like a customer file will contain details of a customer such as customer ID name and contact address 3.9.2 transaction file a transaction file is used to hold data during transaction processing the data relating to business events are recorded the file is later used to update the master file and audit rails for example daily sales are recorded in a busy supermarket on a transactional file and later used to update the stock file the management also uses the file to check on daily or periodic transactions. Assume we have both a master data set and a transaction data set with the variables ID, debt and salary. The data set's contents are as follow. Data set master table ID is 1234 Department is marketing sales record and salary is 12,000, 9,000 14,000 and 11,000 respectively. Dataset transactions. ID is 2 and 4. Department is first is blank, another one is people. Salary is 15,000 for ID 2 and another one is blank. To update the records, apply the transactions dataset to the master dataset. The new master file is obtained is dataset new master. ID is 1234. Department is Marketing, Sales, Records, People. Salary is 12,000, 15,000, 14,000, 11,000 respectively. Because these IDs 1 and 3 are absent from the trans data set, in observation 2, the master data set $9,000 corresponding value for salary was replaced by the trans data set's value of $15,000. However, the department value in observation 2 of the trans data set did not take the place of the department value in the master data set. Since it was absent, the new observation will be included in the new master data set if the transaction data set contains a value of by variable ID that is absent from the master data set. 3.9.3 Purpose of master and transaction files the precise details of customers, suppliers and employees, as well as records of recurrent occurrences relevant to each, are often found in company databases, which can hold exceptionally enormous volumes of information. These databases frequently consist of separate master and transaction files. 
द मास्टर फाइल इंक्लूड्स इंफॉर्मेशन दैट इज यूनिक टू एन इंडिविजुअल और कॉरपोरेशन सच एज नेम्स कंपनी कॉन्टैक्ट्स एड्रेसेस ई मेल लिस्ट एंड पर्टिकुलर प्रोडक्ट्स और सर्विसेज द ट्रांजेक्शन फाइल इंक्लूड्स फैक्ट्स अबाउट एम्प्लॉय लीव डिसिप्लिनरी एक्शन करियर एडवांसमेंट रिपोर्ट्स सेल्स और बाय ट्रांजेक्शंस कैलेंडर इवेंट्स और एम्प्लॉय डिटेल्स दीज ब्लॉक ऑफ ट्रांजेक्शंस डेटा इंक्लूड अ की एंट्री व्हिच इज अ पीस ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन कॉमन टू बोथ मास्टर एंड ट्रांजेक्शन फाइल्स दिस मे बी एन अकाउंट नंबर अ कॉन्टैक्ट नेम एन एम्प्लॉय आइडेंटिफिकेशन नंबर और फिनेंशियल डिटेल्स सच एज परचेज ऑर्डर और इन्वॉइस नंबर द की एंट्री इज अूनिक आइडेंटिफायर दैट द डेटा बेस यूज टू टाई द ट्रांजेक्शन एंट्रीज to their corresponding master file records any query or search for a particular master file transaction will then isolate either the entire group of entries for that record or any one specific entry depending on how the specific key is basically transaction files are used to update master files they are often linked together maintaining separate master and transaction file records allows the master file to be kept at a manageable size and dedicated to entity specific entries only in applications in which users store transaction records off site or on archive servers separating them from the master file also makes archiving a lot easier keeping a dedicated transaction files also makes for easy and effective auditing this file may also serve as a diagnostic or planning aid with many databases featuring extensive reporting functions based on its contents this type of split file arrangement is often known as a referential file system because the master file refers to the transaction file for specific event details 3.10 relevance of database databases and database systems have become essential components of everyday life in modern society within the course of a day Most folks encounter several activities that involve some interaction with a database when we visit the bank to make deposit or withdrawals when we book a hotel or flight when we use a computerized library catalog to look up a bibliographic item or when we order a magazine subscription from a publisher the likelihood that someone will access a database as part of our activities increases The above interactions are samples of what we may call traditional database applications where most of the knowledge that is sorted and accessed is either textual or numeric within the past few years advances in technology are leading to exciting new applications of database systems multimedia based databases can now store picture video clips and sound content geographic information system based database can store and analyze maps whether data and satellite images data warehouses and online analytical processing olap systems are utilized in many companies to extract and analyze useful information from vast database for decision making real time and active database technology is employed in controlling industrial and manufacturing processes Database search techniques are being applied to the planet wide web to improve the search for information needed by users browsing the internet. Some common examples are given below. Number 1 is reservation system. We all know how to book tickets in places like movie theaters, train tickets, airline tickets etc. While booking, we must supply our details so that a particular seat is reserved with us. So here also these reservation systems are using the database and management system for achieving this this info stores are like customer name train number price date etc moreover these details are required to support the correct person during the trip number 2 telephone companies without databases and management systems telephone businesses cannot simply survive we can also ask how these mobile operator businesses maintain track of daily data limit as well as the calls we make given that every mobile phone includes a sim card for calling and internet access for keeping our data they are utilizing databases and database management systems they save the data and produce cell bills based on our usage 
DBMS are used by more than just internet service providers, mobile carriers, etc. In conclusion, databases and databases technology have a significant impact on how computers are being used more and more. In the majority of the applications where computers are employed, it is reasonable to assume that databases play a crucial role. In text questions, number 12, OLAP stands for dash. Number 13, which of the following helps people keep track of things? A. Database. B. Table. C. Instance. D. Relationship. 3.11 Flowchart. Diagrams and charts are always descriptive and captivating when it comes to solving a problem. One such interesting diagrammatic representation technique is flowcharting. The technique can be used to visualize a direction in which a process heads to produce a solution to the problem. When it comes to programming, flowcharting is frequently used to depict how an algorithm operates. Along with providing direction, the technique also gives us insight into how the process is broken down into stages to land at final solution. One attractive aspect of flowcharting is that each step is independent of implementation at any stage and is only concerned about the input and output of a particular stage rather than the actual processing to be done. Additionally, this approach of flowcharting a problem categorizes types of tasks such as data, decision, process, etc. To diagrammatically represent these categories, there are symbols that signify each category. Now that we are aware of how flowcharting acts as a utility, we can dive deep into how the follow-up that it suggests. Point 1. Establish the task. Starting with the task that has to be completed, the first stage is using a problem solving strategy is to establish and define it. Once the problem is defined, a possible solution can be thought of followed by answering the question such as what is the step to be done prior to this or what should be done next. These types of questions give out the chronological structure of the way to be followed to pull off the result. Number 2. Depict the chart. Once all the questions are answered about heading in a problem solving line, the illustrations is done, wherein the tasks are drawn as per their categories using the symbols mentioned above. The tasks are sequential in nature as in what happens next. All these tasks are connected with arrows according to the flow of solution proposed. Number 3. Check the process. This step is all about rechecking what has been done in the previous two stages. Double checking the flowchart from start to end cuts the possibility of leaving out some task in the flow or can identify a wrong flow when it comes to decision making or the sequence that it is expected to flow. Number 4. Optimize the chart. Solution approaches to some problems might get complex very often. Therefore, optimizing a chart can simplify the view and can provide a better and clear cut picture. Redundant and unnecessary tasks can be removed, including performance enhancing optimizations until we get an efficient diagrammatic representation of the solution. Performing all these steps can get overwhelming when the problems are complex and demanding when it comes to the number of tasks to be performed. There are several tools such as Draw, Creately and many others that make this simple and offer free services to execute such flowcharting. Given below is an example that shows how flowchart can be used in showing a simple summation process. First step is, it gets a start, then it goes to a read A, then it goes to read B, and then calculate sum as A plus B. And after that, same as above, calculate sum as A plus B, and after that it comes to an end. In text questions, number 14. A box that can be used to symbolize two different situations A. Rectangle B. Diamond C. Circle D. Parallelogram Drawing a flowchart for an algorithm is referred to as dash. 3.12 Input Process Output Analysis A computer is an electronic device that accepts data, processes data, generates output, and stores data. 
Input Process Output is another name for the idea of creating output information from input data. The input process output concept of the computer can be interpreted as follows. First is input. The computer accepts data as input from the user with the help of an input device. The input can be anything including characters, words, text, sound, images, etc. Next is process. The computer processes the input data. It performs some operations on the data by using the instructions or program given by the user of the data. The action could be arithmetic or logical processing, editing, modifying a document, etc. During processing the data instructions and output are stored for some time in the computer's main memory. Next is output. The outcome of data processing is known as the output. Text, sound, images and other types of output are all possible. The output from the computer can be played, sent to a printer for printing, displayed on a monitor, etc. Next is storage. Secondary storage devices like disk or tapes permanently retain the input data, instructions and output. Anytime later as needed, the stored data may be retrieved. The input process output concept diagram represents. Firstly, input goes to processing and then process goes to storage and then storage comes back to processing and the processing goes to output. 3.13 Report Generation Reports must be accurate, timely and pertinent. To accomplish these three aims, report generation is required and the effectiveness of the generation program directly affects our ability to accomplish the three targets. Then either Excel or Python makes it challenging to generate reports. This section will walk us through everything we need to know about report generation, including its definition, features and software list. 3.13.1 What is report generation? The practice of employing a program to generate reports mainly for business users is known as report generation. We must develop a report definition that specifies the data to be retrieved, where to find it and how to show it before we can generate a report. For a very long time, Excel has been used to create reports. However, many individuals have criticized how difficult and painful it is to create reports using Excel, particularly when we need to do so frequently for regular reports like daily, weekly and monthly reports. 3.13.2 Features of the Report Generator Compared to Excel, the report generation software makes the process of creating reports more effortless and more professional. From data entry to data display, there is less need for us to write code. For instance, to extract data from databases as we would with the SQL database. With a few clicks, even non-technical individuals may get data. YOY and MOM calculations are included in the software as well, saving the time it would take to enter them in Excel manually. Every stage of the report generation process is more user friendly with the report generator. Let us examine the attributes of the report generator in greater detail. Using find report as an example, we can see how we increased our productivity at work by 100%. Feature 1. Support extracting data from multiple data sources. Report generators allows users to aggregate and extract data from numerous data sources. Next. Feature 2 works with real-time work. The daily, monthly, quarterly and annual reports can be generated automatically and sent to the specified email address after the templates and frequency are set up. Next is Feature 3 Support reusing templates. Users can reuse completed report templates to create new reports. Numerous beautiful built-in templates cover a range of situations and businesses. Feature 4 Supports reports exporting and printing. Reports can be exported or printed to Excel, PDF, CSV or pictures by user. Last feature is feature 5. Support view reports on the web or on mobile applications. Users can access reports on mobile devices at any time and from any location thanks to the current report generator. 3.13.3 3. Report generation process with report generators. There are two different report generation process available when using the report generators. 
the full automatic generation is one and the semi automatic generation is the other 3.13.3.1.2 full automatic generation based on the template consider the most popular financial data such as mom and yoy ranking as an example financial statistics templates have been constructed inside report generators like find report from indicators to formulas from titles to formats when using the fully automatic generation all one has to do is log in into their database and drag the appropriate cell 3.13.3.1.3 semi automatic generation use professional functions to generate each module automatically semi automatic report generation is more prevalent and better able to cater the unique needs of customers than full automatic report generation a whole report design process may typically be broken down into the following three steps one is open designers configure data sources create new reports and configure private data sources as part of connecting to databases second point is create new reports define data sources blind data columns summarize and format reports as part of the report design process last point is report previewing saving and publishing are all included in the phrase publish and browse reports the process of retrieving the data from the database structuring it and exporting is at reports is referred to as report production it offers illuminating insights and reassuring references to decision makers a skilled report generator can be valuable ally in business at every stage of reporting it is best to conduct a thorough study on each feature of report generation software before selecting the best option for business a functionally unrestricted free version of find report is available for personal use 3.13.4 popular report generators report generation software there is a rising need for reporting tools that are entirely written in java as the bs structure is used more frequently there are canvas like generators and excel like generators from the standpoint of the interface these two interface paradigms are sometimes combined by software the top 3 report generators in the company are as follows find report crystal report sql server reporting system in text questions number 16 a report generator is utilized to a print files on paper b data entry c update files d all of the above number 17 when a query runs or the report is processed reports use dash to retrieve data from a report a data connections b data source definition c connection string d all of the mentioned 3.14 programming concepts programming is the process of first solving a problem and then writing the code one needs to figure it out to solve a problem by keeping fundamental programming concepts in mind this piece talks about two major programming approaches procedural programming and object oriented programming as well as other supporting concepts to support these approaches namely variable declaration basic syntax data types and structure flow control and debugging 3.14.1 procedural programming a programming style that uses a linear or top down approach it relies on procedures or subroutines to perform certain functions or task programs written using this approach comprise a sequential pattern of instructions to be executed to get the desired results The procedures can be seen as logic chunks that can be called anywhere in code. The catch here is that these logic chunks are sequential in nature. Therefore, it follows a structured programming method that uses block-based program control flow. 3.14.2 Object Oriented Programming. In contrast to procedural programming, this programming approach revolves around objects and methods rather than sequential procedures. objects are the elementary component of oop they can be understood as real world entities that have behavior and attributes associated with them example a student is an object that has attributes such as name class roll number age and has the behavior of reading writing speaking etc next point 
Class is a blueprint of an object which declares variables, constant, and member functions, and then concludes all these as a single data type and its methods. The four pillars of OOP are first is abstraction, hiding unnecessary details. Next is encapsulation, binding data and functions together. Next is polymorphism, methods with the same name but different signatures. Last is inheritance. Acquire properties of an existing parent class. Now that we have a brief overview of the above mentioned programming approaches, we need to know about some concepts that support these approaches. Number one, variable declaration. These are containers for storing data values at a memory location. The declaration is usually made by certain keywords according to the language used. Point number two, syntax. To write a code that a computer understands, one needs to use some programming language like any other language. Programming languages also have words and rules that define them. These rules need to be followed by a programmer to write a code that can be understood by the computer. Point number three, data types and structures. A data type is the category of the data value that is being handled. For example, data can be of numeric type 1, 2, etc. It can be of character type A, B. Some of the fundamental primitive data types are numeric, that is integer and floating point. Next is character. Next is string. And the last is Boolean. Data structures on the other hand are organized structures having a set of data values on which functions can be applied. These structures are used to optimally store a set of values and perform efficient operations on the data. First is stack, next is queue, next is tree, next is heap, next is linked list and the last is array. Point number four, flow control. The flow of a program is a result of decision-making statements that decide what direction the program will go based on the derived scenario. Three types of control flow. First, sequential. It follows the linear execution of statements, one after the other. Second, selection. A test condition selects what action to perform based on the result of the test as true or false. Third is iteration. A statement or a block of code is run repeatedly till the test condition remains true, thus forming a loop. Point number five, debugging. Locating errors and rectifying them is a bottom line activity that makes the code written to produce the desired result. Various tools and techniques are used for locating errors to save time and effort. In text questions, which of the following OOPS ideas refer to giving the client access to only the information they need? A. Encapsulation B. Abstraction C. Data hiding D. Data binding Question number 19 A computer programming language that states a series of well-structured steps and procedures within its programming is known as DASH. Question number 20 DASH data type is used to store the value 200. 3.15 Use of data files in programming When a program is terminated, complete data is lost but to prevent this, data files are used. Since data files are stored in random access memory, when the program is running and it is stored in read-only memory, when the program is terminated, data files are stored in non-volatile memory after the program is terminated, resulting in the preservation of data. As shown in the image below, a C program writes something in the file and the data is stored on disk ROM in form of ASCII text file or binary file. Handling the huge amount of data Whenever a program requires a large size of data, it can be very tedious and time-taking to enter the data. However, if we pass that data into a data file, it will become very suitable for the programmer to use that data in the program. It is possible because of the accessibility of the contents of the data file using read commands in programming languages. The only condition is that the data should already be present in a data file and from that data file, the programmer can easily use fragments of data. Next point is data transmission. Transferring data from one computer to another is a ubiquitous example of data transmission, but the data produced by a program cannot be transferred. 
इट कैन ओनली बी ट्रांसमिटेड बाय कन्वर्टिंग द डेटा इन टू अ डेटा फाइल एंड देन ट्रांसफरिंग द डेटा फाइल टू अनदर कंप्यूटर द डेटा ट्रांसमिटेड बाय डेटा फाइल विल बी अनऑल्टर्ड वाइल ट्रांसफरिंग इट विल नॉट बी एफेक्टेड बाय द फ्यूचर चेंजेस मेड बाय प्रोग्राम अनलेस द प्रोग्रामर एक्सप्लिसिटली चेंजेस द डेटा नेक्स्ट पॉइंट इज एप एंड वेब डेवलपमेंट We all know that app development uses XML for designing the app, whereas web development uses HTML. Whenever we load a web page or an app screen, a data file is created in the background, storing the data about the design and how that design is implemented. Next point and the last point is hidden data files. Sometimes a programmer requires to store some data. which should be hidden from the user to prevent the user from corrupting or tampering with the data this is accomplished by using closed data files format or proprietary format files here data files contain metadata data about data elements according to the preferences of a programmer 3.16 management of data processing systems in organizations data is not helpful in its original form to any organization for organizations to improve their business strategy and gain a competitive edge data processing plays an important role employees worldwide can understand and use data by turning it into a readable representation in graphs charts tables and documents by data processing we refer to the carrying out of operations on data especially by a computer to retrieve transform or classify information to generate usable information from raw data an organization's team of data scientists and data engineers often performs it in a step by step manner the raw data is then collected sorted processed examined and stored in a readable format thus managing a data processing system involves both the system hardware and software as well as some stages of data processing point 1 data collection the first step of data processing is the collection of the data Data is pulled from the available sources of an organization has its employees. The data sources available must be trustworthy and well built. Next point, data conversion. Transforming data into a format that can be processed. Next point, data cleansing. Often referred to as the pre-processing stage of data processing, it eliminates error from data before processing. Raw data is cleaned up and structured for data processing. Next point organizing involves grouping the data into sets or groups or categories next point data input the organized and clean data is then entered into its destination and translated into a language that system can understand next point analysis also known as processing the data is processed for interpretation by which extracting and producing valuable data from the raw data is possible next point reporting presenting the information it is the output of processing data usable to known data scientist in the form of graphs videos images tables and many more last point is data storage the final stage of data processing is storage after all the data processing stages the data must be stored so that it cannot be lost so for future reference the data is stored management of system resources assigned to the various functions is necessary for managing the many parts of data processing system the process of coordinating all the functions to guarantee the system runs smoothly is also included in management control is an oversight role of management and ensures that the data processing system performs an anticipated and produces the desired result control also ensures that any system problems are identified and fixed For a company or organization the task of data processing is crucial as it helps to understand information quickly data processing increases productivity and profits better decisions and more accurate and reliable data further cost reduction ease in storage distribution and report making followed by better analysis and presentations are other advantages in text questions question number 21 Which of the following terms best defines the kind of analysis that transforms massive volumes of data into one or more summaries? A. Analysis. B. Conversion. C. Aggregation. D. Sorting. Question number twenty-two. Dash best describes how data is moved from 
an old system into a new one such as payroll system 3.17 summary this chapter thus gives us an insight into how data is gathered organized and used to give informative outputs as we say data files can be organized in various ways by analyzing the usage category of the data apart from organization and storage we also learned about databases and their relevance in real world scenarios data is not just limited to information view it is also used in programming to read write and process information thereby introducing us to the input process output analysis that data goes through to provide meaningful solutions thank you for listening